catching on pretty well by now. Um, we'll go through this page a little bit quicker. Um, number nine will slow it down a little bit for though. Um, and as always, speed up, slow down, fast forward, rewind, whatever you need to do to, to understand these, these problems. Um, so we're going to take a look at the strength of a retainment wall, which is just a, a wall that retains things, holds stuff, holds stuff back. In this case, it's designed to protect a nuclear reactor. Um, and then we have this rocket-propelled F-4 Phantom jet. It's crashed head-on into a concrete barrier at high speed in Sandia, New Mexico, which we don't really care about. We don't care about the date so much. We don't care about the model of the plane. We just care that it's being it's being crashed into a wall. Um, so remember, there is a typo on this page. It should say 19,100 kilograms. Um, if you didn't catch that, then that'll that that will change things a little bit. Actually, quite a bit. So it says the uh, retainment wall has a mass of 469,000 kilograms, which is big. It makes sense. It's a, it's a retainment wall that can take a, an impact from a jet. And the wall is sitting on a cushion of air. So just sitting there, that is going to give us a velocity of zero. All right. And we want to figure out what happens during the uh, during the collision. What's the... What's the initial speed? Sorry, prior to the collision, um, that this plane, that this plane has. All right, so we know to begin with, we've got a jet, and we've got a wall, and then to end with, the jet and the wall are moving together, so we have an inelastic collision, which means the mass from the jet and the mass from the wall are going to combine to give us the new mass for the total system. So to begin with, we know that the mass of the jet is 19,100. We don't know the velocity that the jet has. That's the whole point of the problem. We want to know the initial speed of the F4 Phantom. So careful, it's tempting to put that 8.41 in for this, but that's after the collision. That's both of our objects moving together. We know the wall is 469,000 kilograms. It's just sitting there, so it has no velocity. So really, we could take this step out because it's not going to change anything. If that freaks you out, of course, you can do your 469,000 times zero, and it's going to give you zero anyway. And later on, when you go to add zero, it's not going to change your answer at all. And then on the other side of things, again, we know the mass of the jet. We know the mass of the retaining wall. Together, we know the total mass is whatever those two are added. In this case, 488,000. 100. All right, we also know that afterwards, so after the collision, so after this jet has ended up um, blasting into the wall or moving the wall, it moves along with the wall at 8.41 meters per second. So order of operations would tell me do my everything in my parentheses first. So 19,100 plus 469,000, that's where I come out with this 488. Multiply it by velocity, so that's where I'm coming out with this 4.1 million is from those two numbers multiplied. And on the other side of things, it's just 19,100 V. All right, so at this point, we want to go ahead and be able to get V by itself. V is currently being multiplied by 19,100. Divide, do the opposite to get rid of it. If I do it to one side, do it to the other. And I come out with 214.9 meters per second which should make sense right it's a plane planes moving pretty fast so 214.9 meters per second does not seem that unreasonable think about the fact that we moved a wall that's 469,000 kilograms we're moving it at 8.41 meters per second so this plane has a lot of momentum in order to be able to do that well the mass is really small in comparison to the mass the mass of the plane is very small in comparison to the mass of the wall so it would make sense then that we must have to since the momentum to begin with has to end, equal the momentum to end with we must have to make up that momentum somehow if it's not in the mass it's going to be in the velocity so 214.9 a fairly large velocity makes sense in relationship to this problem now when you go to do your check step you'll see that you don't come out with exactly uh, the answer that you you should. Uh, one side is off by like three or four hundred from the other side. 
But we've got to realize these numbers are really big. So if I end up with a statement that ends up looking like, let's see, 19,100 times 214.9 is somewhere around 4 million, it's like 104,500 or something like that. Um, that's different than 4,104,900 something. It's different by three, four hundred, somewhere around there. When you go to plug that in, is it okay to be off by three hundred? Um, and that freaks a lot of people out that it is actually okay to be off by that much. We've rounded down here, and I multiply by a fairly large number. So any little bit of rounding that I do here is going to throw off my numbers quite a bit. But we've also got to realize, just like money, if we've got four million dollars, three hundred bucks, not too big of a deal. Same thing with our numbers here. If we've got a number that's over 4 million and we're off by 300. Not um, not that big of a deal. So you'll notice that when you go to do the check step in that in that problem that it's it's not right on and that's okay. Number eight is very similar to the previous one. We've got a moose standing still, so that's where that zero is coming from. There's a locomotive that is oncoming. Uh, locomotive we know its mass we know that it's traveling at 10 meters per second engineer sees the moose unable to stop the train but um, ends up hitting the moose and luckily the moose just rides down the track sitting on the cow catcher no animals were harmed um, so the, the moose is fine but um, it's on the cow catcher so that means that the mass of that locomotive is actually going to increase because now the now the moose is sitting on that train as well so it should make sense that if my moose is stationary, just sitting there to begin with, my locomotive's 10 meters per second, well, when I end up crashing into the moose and picking it up, it's going to be harder for that locomotive to move because it's more massive. If I've got more mass, it's harder to get it to continue to, to move. So it makes sense that I would lose some velocity. Well, my velocity locomotive to begin with is 10. My velocity after I go through and do all my math ends up being 9.42 meters per second. We do have to realize the locomotive is a lot bigger than the moose, so our final velocity should be closer to what the locomotive's was, but it should be slightly less because now we have more mass that wasn't moving to begin with. So 9.42, slightly less than 10 still very similar to the locomotive, not not as similar to the moose, so we know that we are in pretty good shape there. And of course you could take that 9.42, plug it back into the problem, and see do both sides match up with each other. Alright, so number nine we'll take a little more time on just because this is this is one that can be a little bit of a challenge. We have somebody that's on a skateboard and then they jump off the skateboard. So to begin with, we've got the person on the skateboard. We know the skateboard's mass. I don't know the person's mass, though. So that's why I have a mass of 4 kilograms for the skateboard. I don't know Lee's mass. So that's the whole point of this problem. What the heck is this? All right. We do know that to begin with, Lee is on the skateboard. So their masses are totaled together. They're going at a certain velocity, 3 meters per second. And then to end with, we know that Lee jumps off the back of the skateboard. doesn't matter if it's the back of the skateboard or the front of the skateboard. It just says that Lee continues to go flying, um, or as, as they're jumping off, continues to go forward, so along with the, the skateboard. So that's why my 2 here is a positive, because Lee continues forward. The velocity of 2 meters per second. And we already know that the skateboard is traveling forward. And forward to us in this problem was positive. So positive 3 here, positive 2 here. And this is it causes the skateboard to go flying forward with a speed of 15.5 meters per second relative to the ground. So that just means it's, it's going 15.5 meters per second. It specifies relative to the ground because it could be relative to Lee. We don't we don't know so we do need that specification if we didn't have it we would assume that it's relative to the ground um, but it is just nice to remind us um, what it's what it's in relation to okay 
So then from there, the big thing is we, we will know one of our masses. Same deal with on the other side. We don't know the mass of Lee. So what freaks a lot of people out is this step. We can't just do 3 times 4, call it 12, and say 12 plus m. We've got to distribute. And right, so 3 times 4 gives us 12. And then 3 times m, after distributing, gives us 3m. The other side of things, 2m can't be combined with anything quite yet. And 4 times 15 and a half gives us 62. Well, then what exactly do I do here? There's a couple of things. Um, this step right here and this step could have been done um, in in reverse. It doesn't it doesn't matter. So I just chose to take care of my m first by getting it on getting it on the left hand side. We could have just as easily started taking care of the 62 first. So I end up with 2m over here. We got to get rid of it. I'm going to start combining like terms. So get rid of it by subtracting it away. If I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other, whether or not that's variable variables that I'm subtracting, numbers, or a combination of both, like, um, like is being done here. So subtract that off, and I'm going to be left with m or 1m. Either, either way, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm going to be left behind with 12 plus 1m equals 62. Well, how do I get m by itself? get rid of 12 on each side and I'm left with 1m equals 50 1m is just the same thing as m because anything times 1 is itself All right. and again we could take this number then plug it in for m and do your check step we'd have 50 plus 4 is 54 times 3 should equal the same thing as 50 times 2 plus 4 times 15 and a half and we will notice, since there's no rounding in this problem, that one side equals the other side entirely. All right, so that is it for page four.